design model provide guidelines to organize appropriate pedagogical scenarios to achieve instructional goals. Hence, technology is a powerful tool that can support and transform education. In fact, technology, together with the instructional design model, can make the instruction effective, efficient, and engaging for the learners. Thus, welcome to the Sitnayanites Tech Talk from Mary's Principles of Instruction. I am Erica. I am Jatrina. I am Grizzly. I am Eliza and I am Tiffany and we, and we are your Tech Talkers for today. David Merrill is the person behind Merrill's Principles of Instruction. He created five principles of instruction to assist educators to increase students' learning. As he believes, we should show students what we are trying to teach them instead of just telling them. The highlight of this model is to provide opportunities for learners to use new knowledge and skills by applying them to a task or problem. Students reflect and discuss what they have learned to revise, recombine, and modify their new knowledge. The figure shown illustrates the Merrill's principles of instruction that facilitates learning which follows engagement in real-world problems, activation of prior experience, demonstration of skills, application of skills, and integration of these skills into real-world activities. Shown in this figure is another illustration of Merrill's principle of instruction in an inverted triangle, which basically means that the process starts with a bigger path following five steps. The first principle is problem-centered. Learning is promoted when learners are engaged in solving real-world problems. By making tasks relatable, students are motivated and retain knowledge longer. Students learn more when given real-world problems to solve. Take note that problems should range from simple to complex tasks. Problems should be authentic, real-world, and if possible, personal. Hence, learners develop a deeper understanding of key concepts while strengthening problem-solving skills such as analytical thinking, initiative, reasoning skills, creativity, as well as critical thinking skills. There are three phases of problem-centered learning. In show tasks, provide a work example of the task that learners will complete. In task level, ensure learners are engaged at the problem and task levels, as well as the operation or action level. While in the problem progression, begin with a basic problem then build the complexity to scaffold learning. The second principle is activation. Learning is promoted when existing knowledge is activated as a foundation for new knowledge. Activation is more than merely testing prerequisite knowledge. Simply recalling information is not enough to activate previous knowledge. Tags should be designed to demonstrate knowledge. When learners feel that they already know some of the material to be taught, then their existing experience can be activated by an appropriate opportunity to demonstrate what they already know. This activity can be used to help direct students to the yet to be learned new material and thus result to more efficient instruction. The things that we need to consider in the activation stage are the following. First, Identify where the learners are before introducing new content to help them link and mail the old with the new. 
Second, provide relevant experiences to ensure that they have a basic understanding of the topic before introducing a complex concept. Third, let learners recall, relate, describe, or apply knowledge from the relevant experiences that can be used as a foundation for the new knowledge. And lastly, activate mental knowledge. It is activating those mental models that can be modified or tuned to enable learners to incorporate the new knowledge into their existing knowledge. There are three phases in the activation. In the previous experience, tap into learners' existing knowledge and experiences. While in the new experience, ensure texts are engaging, interesting, and authentic. And lastly, in the structure, begin with the basic problem, then build the complexity to scaffold learning. The third principle of the Mary's principle of instruction is demonstration. Learning is promoted when new knowledge is demonstrated to the learner. Demonstration allows learners to identify the areas of improvement. There are things that we need to consider in order to be successful in the demonstration principle. First, facilitated learning. When learners are provided with appropriate guidance including directed relevant information, multiple presentations, and comparison of demonstrations. Learning is facilitated when the demonstration is consistent with the learning goal. Second, deliver or present multiple examples. In delivering content that is incorporated with multiple demonstrations, multiple examples allow learners to compare different perspectives. Third, use media that supports effective learning. Some forms of media may compete with the learner's attention. So, be careful in choosing backgrounds and audios that is relevant to the summary of the graphics. Engaging with the learners is very important because online learners can absorb information effectively when they see prime examples. Here are the three phases of demonstration. First is consistency. Provide content with demonstrations and examples that reflect the learning outcome. Second is guidance. Provide multiple representations of ideas, concepts, and perspectives. While in relevant media, ensure media supports effective learning. The four principles of Merrill Society is the application. In this space, learning is promoted when new knowledge is applied by the learner. Here, students are encouraged to carry out, perform, and solve a task on their own. As an educator, we should refrain from coaching our students that learner could be able to do the task independently and collaboratively. Students are not empty vessels waiting to be filled and talking to them alone would make them understand anything. Spoon feeding is no longer advisable nowadays in which students work alone and teacher just read, write, and explain. It is now more effective to engage students in collaborative activities hands-on activities and real-world problem-solving and you as a teacher should act as a facilitator of their learning. The third phase is varied problem. It provides opportunities for learners to apply their learnings to different contexts. Students are not all the same, meaning that they have different kinds of skills and ideas. Hence, by having these differences, it allows learners to apply to different contexts to be able to learn from different perspectives. The last principle of Merrill's design is integration. Learning is promoted when new knowledge is integrated into the learner's work. This can occur when demonstrating or sharing their knowledge and skill to others, reflecting on their learning, and transferring new meaning and understanding to their own lives. Students must be encouraged and motivated to practice lessons they have learned. There are three pieces of integration. First, 
Watch me. Provide opportunities for learners to demonstrate and share their learning. Second, reflection. Includes reflection activities to recognize progress. Third, creation. Encourage learners to transfer their learning to their own lives. So here how this looks all together. Sounds great, right? So what does this really mean? Theories always sound great, but do they really work? We decided to apply Meryl's ideas in our field of specialization, math. How can we apply this principle in mathematics when we become a teacher? First, we should integrate a problem-centered approach. For example, present a problem that they can relate and use in real life, just like computing for the simple and compound interest. This topic can be used when they manage their finances and businesses in the future. Activation. See if the students can recall concepts and formulas regarding simple and compound interest to activate their knowledge. Demonstration. Give examples on how to solve these types of problems. Discuss and explain in the class. Be sure to use an appropriate media and let the students demo the problems in real life. Application. Give quizzes and problem sets regarding the topic. Let them solve collaboratively and assist them. Make the students reflect on the topic and share how this new knowledge can be applied in real life. They should be able to find and create situations wherein simple and compound interests are used. Thus, we have seen Merrill's principles of instruction. That is essential, substantial, and effective. As an instructional design model to be used in teaching. Always remember that the key to improve learning is demonstrate and do the real thing. Learners must actively engage with the content. In order to fully grasp the information and apply it in the real world. Once again, I am Erica. I am Katrina. I am Frizzy. I am Eliza. And I am Tiffany. And we, and we are, are your Protect Talkers for today. today.